birth of Jesus. Number two, an angel visits Mary and Joseph. In the city of Nazareth in Galilee lived a teenage Jewish girl named Mary. Mary was a descendant of King David, which means that King David was Mary's great, 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 great grandfather. Mary and her family loved God and had been taught the Old Testament scriptures since she was a child. Mary was excited to be engaged to be married to a good man named Joseph. Joseph, the man Mary loved so much, was a carpenter in Nazareth. He was a Jew, and he loved God and believed God's promises. Like Mary, Joseph was also a descendant of King David. Joseph loved Mary and was looking forward to their marriage. One day, as Mary was going about her normal routine, she was startled to see an angel standing right beside her. The angel, whose name was Gabriel, had been sent by God to give a very special message to Mary. The angel spoke to Mary and said, Hail you who are highly favored! The Lord is with you! Blessed are you among women! Mary was worried. She did not know what the angel meant. The angel continued, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will have a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. He will be a king who will rule forever. How surprised Mary was. She did not understand what the angel meant. How can this be? she asked. The angel answered, The child who will be born to you will be the Son of God. Elizabeth, your cousin, will also have a son, even though she is old. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Mary probably had many questions in her mind, but she believed what the angel had told her. She was willing for this wonderful thing to happen to her. Mary replied, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be just as you have said. And just as quickly as the angel had appeared, the angel disappeared. Mary thought about this startling news and remembered the many years that her cousin Elizabeth had longed for a child. How happy Elizabeth must be right now as the baby grew inside her. Although it was a long way to Elizabeth's house in the hill country of Judah, Mary set out to visit her dear cousin. When Mary arrived at the house of Zacharias and Elizabeth, she entered her cousin's house and greeted Elizabeth. As soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's voice, the baby leaped for joy inside Elizabeth's womb. This unborn baby was very much alive and could feel joy even though he wasn't born yet. Isn't that amazing and wonderful? God caused Elizabeth to know that Mary was going to be the mother of the Savior. Elizabeth spoke words of blessing and honor to Mary. We read them in Luke chapter 1, verses 42 through 45. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Mary was thrilled to hear Elizabeth's blessing, and she replied, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Mary and Elizabeth spent many happy days together. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months, returning to her home in Nazareth about the time that Elizabeth's baby was to be born. Before long, Joseph heard the news that Mary was going to have a baby. Joseph was upset at this news. He was engaged to Mary. How could it be that she was going to have a baby? He thought that maybe he shouldn't marry her after all. God knew that Joseph needed to know what was happening. One night, as Joseph was sleeping, an angel came to him and spoke to him in the dream. Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. She will give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. 
When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and married Mary. How glad Joseph must have been to know that the Savior was to be born. He and Mary eagerly awaited the birth of God's Son, baby Jesus. At the little home of Zacharias and Elizabeth in the hill country of Judah, there was great rejoicing. A son had been born to them just as God had promised. The neighbors and relatives were almost as happy about the baby as Zacharias and Elizabeth were. According to Jewish custom, babies were named when they were eight days old. On the eighth day, neighbors and relatives came to celebrate with the family. You should name the baby after his father, Zacharias, one person suggested. Yes, it is a tradition to name a child after his father. How surprised they were to hear Elizabeth say, No, do not call him Zacharias. His name is John. Why do you want to call him John? they asked. You have no relatives by that name. Zacharias had been deaf and unable to speak since the day the angel spoke to him in the temple. He did not know there was a discussion going on about the baby's name. Finally, the guests made motions with their hands to ask Zacharias what he wanted his son to be named. Zacharias motioned for a writing tablet to be brought to him. When they brought it, he wrote in plain letters for all to read, His name is John. How strange, the people thought. Just as soon as Zacharias wrote the letters on the tablet, something wonderful happened. Zacharias could hear and speak again. Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and began praising God for giving them this wonderful baby. Then Zacharias prophesied, which means he spoke words that the Spirit of God had put in his heart. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. News of the baby's birth spread throughout the hill country, and people began to talk about him. What kind of child will he be? they asked. They had heard how the angel had told Zacharias that the child would be born. The people talked about how Zacharias had been unable to hear or speak from the time he saw the angel until the baby was named John. All these things were certainly unusual. They believed that surely John would grow up to be a great man. The angel had said eight important words to Joseph about the baby that would be born to Mary. He will save his people from their sins. What a tremendous promise was given in those eight simple words. The angel had beautifully stated the work of the coming Messiah, Jesus. He will come as a savior. His purpose is to come to save his people from their sins. Why do you think God chose Mary to be the mother of baby Jesus? Mary did not have a college degree or a portfolio of accomplishments. Mary wasn't famous or well-known. Mary was engaged to Joseph, a simple carpenter, not an important ruler or nobleman. Joseph and Mary were quite poor. They didn't have a fancy home in which to raise Jesus. Joseph and Mary would have to work for a living. No cash bonus came along with the job of raising the Son of God. So why do you think God chose Joseph and Mary to be the parents of Jesus? There were many people who were descendants of King David that God could have chosen, but he chose Mary and Joseph because they loved and obeyed God. We see that love and obedience in Mary's response to the angel, Let it happen to me as you have said. We see that love and obedience in Joseph's response to the words of the angel that appeared to him in the dream. Joseph obeyed the words of the angel and took Mary as his wife. I challenge you to be a person like Joseph and Mary that God can use to accomplish his plan.